Hey, young world, it's your boy Tremendous for Lab Freak back in the building with a review. Today we got the Samsung Galaxy A71 5G. I got the Sprint version, but due to the new merger with T-Mobile, it's T-Mobile version in the building. Now the packaging is pretty simple. It's not that uh, grand. It just includes the device, a wall USB charger, card, terms, condition pack. We'll get this unboxed. Bring it in. Okay, so I'll show you what we got here. It's a nice, I don't know if it's glass or plastic as Samsung likes to call it, but uh, it has a nice design, little subtle grooves coming in from the bottom to the middle. And then, uh, this, is, this is the black prism color, by the way. We got our four cam bams right here. Uh, I believe it's a 64 megapixel wide camera, a depth sensor, and a um, something else. I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to look into it and let you guys know we're gonna get this thing powered on. So let me get up in here right quick. Give me a second before to do our login thing. So yeah, feels pretty sleek, nice design. I would say that these bands, this uh, side band is aluminum. It's not plastic like the A71 is typically uh, known to have, the original one, the global version. But yeah, it's, it's pretty, uh, yeah, as you can see, we got antenna bands at the top and the bottom. So well, I don't think they uh, plastic band would need a, a plastic frame would need a, a, a tenor band. So yeah, let's get up in there, see what we got going. Put my pen in there right quick, get a little secret. Um, and yeah, and we've been, uh, I've been testing this device rather for, I'd say about two weeks. And it runs pretty smooth. Um, it handles everything, you know, the A65, doesn't quite exact match up on the um, benchmarks as the 865, but I will say that uh, it does do its diligence, due diligence. You know, it does do the job, gets everything done. Um, I haven't experienced any lag. I played some rounds of PUBG, Call of Duty, with my old lady, we like to uh, multiplayer team up on them boys, put in work. And it seems to, uh, it, it, it really doesn't give me any issues with, with frame rates, reliability, connectivity issues. And um, yeah, I just, um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with the device uh, in, in general. I just have an issue with, you know, Samsung, has done a great job with the One UI system. They, they, they're they uh, made the settings, handling everything a lot more uh, suited for one hand use. But man, this, this, this uh, excessive app issue is in, I wouldn't call, I don't wanna call it bloatware, but their customizations to Android things that they add is, is so many apps that I don't really feel like, you know, I made this folder, Samsung Tools folder, for apps that didn't even come pre-installed. And you got Samsung folder, you got Bixby, AR Zone, My Files, which is, you know, built-in file management app, which is, you know, pretty essential. Samsung Health, Smart Things, and Smart Switch. Now, Smart Things is a decent app. I think I installed it. It doesn't come pre-installed, but it may. It, 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 it helps you manage and keep up with all of the um, uh, apps that uh, are devices, I'm sorry, appliances in your house, TVs, microwaves, refrigerators, ovens, if they if they're smart washers and dryers that Samsung makes to, to handle, um, uh, rem uh, like for example, your TV, I have a Samsung 5 series smart TV, and I can control my uh, volume power on. I can see all the different apps like the Hulu's and the Netflix and the uh, 
Prime videos that are installed and the channels and the things that I like. Oh my goodness, excuse me guys, these notifications are off the hook. And uh, all the channels and shows that I watch on their respective um, uh, apps, networks, streaming services, and just chime in directly from the remote. It's all integrated within the TV, so that's pretty cool. That's that's essential. But Samsung has a thing, you know, Game Launcher, Galaxy Wearable. They have Gallery. They have their own store, Galaxy Store. They have own camera, you know, clock contacts, calculator, uh, calendar. I think they're, they're necessary, but Google already has those apps made for Android, so it's really no need for that. Uh, it's on internet app, web browser, it's on messaging app. And then this is this is on the first screen, not to mention that it has an app set aside for Samsung things, uh, Samsung apps. I had to set a folder for third party things like the Samsung video, Samsung music app, shop, Samsung, Samsung pass. Voice recorder is, just, I don't know how it got ended up in there, but I think it's pre installed. And then everything else you see on the screen, except with the exception of Facebook and, and uh, my Sprint app, excluding these uh, folder, app folders, app, yes, app folders, are Samsung apps. And you have Google Calendar for Android. Google has its own camera app, but I understand all OEMs have their own integrated camera app. Clock app, contacts app, calendar app, gallery app. They're all Samsungs, and, you know, they, they could dial back a little bit on that, man. That's one thing, like, their marketing is off the chain, but out of the two Korean... Uh, uh, South Korean OEMs, LG and Samsung, man, I don't know why everyone rags on LG's uh, launcher the way that they do because it's really way more closer to stock and scaled back than Samsung's offering. And everyone always complains about LG UX, uh, but hey, I take that any day. Uh, LG has the Google feed to the left. I love, you know, the Google feed. It, it, it's what I, as a default, will just tap on the G and the search widget to actually get. And, and I just really um, appreciate that more. I think that I normally will keep Samsung Daily off just so I don't have to deal with it. It, it lags if sometimes it, it, it takes up to me. I just think it takes up resources, memory. I don't, it's just, sick. these are the things that not this isn't the current Android, Samsung, but these are things when Android was at five, six, version seven, and you know phones still had two gigabytes of RAM or whatever. The the lagginess will come into play because it's really not Android; it's the customization or distroish type of skin that the OEMs add to Android that that uh is in one way similar to Linux that actually takes more resources than. Android requires, which is one reason why Pixel phones run so smooth, uh, because Google, with the exception of integrating some of their uh, default apps, they run, it runs, uh, is minimal, it runs the way stock Android is meant to run, but uh, once the OEMs get to customizing, customizing Android and adding their flavor and look and feel to give their devices a unique uh, position in the market, an offering or whatnot, then that's when you have problems come to play. You got OEMs like OnePlus, Motorola, that's known to stay close to stock. And I don't think, you know, uh, LG gets enough credit for doing that because with the exception of some coloring here and there in the settings, quick settings, and some of their uh, uh, apps that are LG exclusive, like Quick Memo and LG Pay, which aren't all that, you know, excessive and they aren't duplicate with the built-in apps that Android already offers, that they pretty much keep the UI stock as possible. And why One UI 2.0 has come a long way to being streamlined and they're running down a lot of the issues with that, that Samsung will go haywire with storing everything, including the kitchen sink, into the uh, operating system on top of Android. They've came a long way with that, but I still think that these pre-installed apps, man, or something else and you know the a71 itself pretty much has all of the features that the galaxy line is known to have uh, until you know you get to hardware exclusive features like wireless power sharing and a uh, hundred times uh, zoom on the camera lenses and things of that nature pretty much all of the software offering itself samsung um 
pretty much includes with the 871 as every it's pretty much everything that you would see software wise in one UI on the Galaxy S lines and the Note Galaxy Note line. Um, another thing I think is great about uh, Samsung is they give you value for what you, you, you buy. This device here is available for $599 in the US, no uh, all major carriers, and even a lot from Samsung. But at the same time, um, they give you a lot of uh, in-game exclusives, uh, uh, partnerships with um, certain carriers. And like right now, you can get like $150 back or it worked for rewards if you get a Galaxy A71 or up. Uh, and that gives you a year of free Postmates Unlimited, um, $25 uh, credit for your first purchase through Postmates or order through Postmates and $50 in the Galaxy store, which you could use, or, or in Galaxy Rewards, which you can use anywhere in like Samsung Shop, uh, like for headphones or a case or whatever for your phone or in the Galaxy store for apps and games and such. And um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you can integrate it with uh, Samsung Pay and depending on what kind of debit services that you use through Samsung Pay, you can turn that into $50 cash. So that's like almost, uh, so that's $150, $175 worth of uh, rewards you get when you get the Samsung A71 any of the S20 series or uh, things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, Samsung's known is good for that. They, they do give a lot of uh, cash back specials and reward uh, programs with their devices and they're good for that. So, if you want to count that into the overall retail value and price of this device, then you can. But, yeah, uh, other than that, I really don't see anything wrong with the devices. It runs like a traditional Android. You would expect for it to go, what you would need for it to do. It doesn't lag. It doesn't slow down. But it it doesn't glitch. But it does take, I think Samsung has figured out a way with their animations, with their apps launching, to create an illusion as if an app is loading. But it really is... It takes a few seconds for things to, to launch quicker than you would maybe on a Samsung device that has Snapdragon 865. So it's not specifically exclusive to Samsung devices. It's just their skin and all of their pre-installed system features. You know, they do take system resources. So that's one thing I think Samsung could, could still improve upon. But overall, this is a pretty solid device. Pretty good to go. Uh, Samsung Galaxy A71 5G. Check it out. T-Mobile, Sprint. I believe it's available for Verizon and AT&T as well. But you can get it unlocked. Compatible for any carrier if you get it directly from Samsung. So yeah, tremendous for Live Freak once again. Take care. Till next time.